We are now at the first rest day of the 2017 Tour de France. So I think the time is right, Matt, to look mm. back over the opening nine stages of the race and discuss five key talking points. One of the biggest stories of the opening week of the Tour de France was the disqualification of Borda Hansgrohe's world road race champion, Peter Sagan, after he was accused and found guilty by the race jury, at least, of causing the crash of Mark Cavendish, which in turn led to both John Degenkolb and Ben Swift coming to grief as well. Now, Peter Sagan immediately apologised to Cavendish at the finish, but was Peter Sagan entirely to blame? Well, the main focus was on that angled right elbow of Sagan, just at the point where Mark Cavendish was trying to go through a quite small gap between Sagan and the barriers. Was that elbow out just for balance purposes? Was it deliberate? Or was it just moved out by the bike of Mark Cavendish? Uh, well, most former pros and current professional riders and many observers seem to disagree with the disqualification of the world champion. Well, what it does prove is that no rider is too big to be ejected by the jury of the Tour de France. Our next talking point is not really something that we've learned through the 2017 Tour de France, but these opening stages have really reminded us of just how brutal the sport of cycling can be. I mean, just take a look at this list of injuries sustained by the riders over the opening nine stages of the race. Alejandro Valverde, a fractured leg and kneecap out for the rest of the season. Yoni Zagire, a fractured lumbar. Geraint Thomas, a fractured collarbone, and Mark Cavendish, a fractured shoulder. We'll add to the mix Luke Durbridge with ankle ligament damage, uh, Robert Haysink with uh, another fractured collarbone, uh, Manuel Mori, and also uh, Jesus Harada, and of course Richie Port, all hospitalised. I mean, what it does remind us is the fact that cyclists are so, so vulnerable with only lycra and a helmet protecting yourself from road furniture and, of course, the tarmac. Now, I've got still the utmost respect for the guys and girls that still race bikes, but this sport certainly isn't for the faint-hearted, is no, it? No, it's not at all. Just how good is Marcel Kittel? As we head into the first rest day of this year's Tour de France, he's already picked up stages two, six and seven, although they haven't exactly been perfect. I mean, his lead-out train hasn't exactly been firing on all cylinders, yet despite that, he still proved to be the most powerful and arguably the smartest too. Yeah, on stage two, he emerged pretty late in what was a chaotic headwind sprint uh, to take the victory there. Then on stage six, he was dropped off by his last lead out man, Fabio Sabatini, albeit with still 800 metres to go. And then, well, as you said, he showed immense strength and intelligence to go from 12th at 250 metres to go, overtaking the last couple of rides inside the last 100 metres to take the victory by a clear length. Yeah, and then on stage seven, he inadvertently mistook the 150 metres to go board for the 200 metres to go board, yet still generated enough power to pass an absolutely flying Ed Valbos and Hagen. Well, just. Yeah, by a pixel, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and the ground that he made up over those closing metres was made all the more impressive by the fact that they were travelling at that point at in excess of 70 kilometres per hour. France have a new cycling superstar in the form of 24-year-old Lilian Calmajane of Direct Energy after his fabulous solo stage victory on day eight of the race to Station de Rousse. Yeah, the Tour debutant was always going to be one rider to watch, especially after his stage win in last year's Vuelta de España, and also his run into the Tour de France, where he's won no less than three stage races. But the sheer manner of and style of his win, I think, surpassed all expectations. And he even overcame a bout of cramp with three Ks to go. Panache. The question is though, Matt, where does his future lie? I mean, will he start to focus on the Hillier Classics, the likes of your Lombardia or Liège, Baston Liège? Uh, will he continue to focus on stage wins at the major tours? Because as you point out, he's now got two major wins to his name from that point of view. Or will he develop into a major GC threat, particularly at the Tour de France? Now, the French will certainly be hoping it's the latter because it's now 32 years since France last won their race overall. But I think he's the next Thomas Vauclair. And he was actually channeling the spirit of uh, Tommy Vauclair, who's of course riding this Tour de France with a bit of tongue wagging down at the finish straight. But I think also the big question, Dan, will he remain with Jean-René Bernadou's team? Of course, he's only pro contact. I think he's going up to World Tour next year. Watch this space. 
Our final talking point is going to be the ever controversial unwritten rules. Now the issue of unwritten rules has again reared its head on the climb of the Mont du Chat where Fabio Aru clearly attacked when Chris Froome was having a mechanical. Yeah, frankly, I'm sick of this. Firstly, this year it was Tom Dumoulin at the Giro d'Italia in Pougate, and as you said, Pugate. Fabio Aru uh, attacking Chris Froome when it clearly, at that point, he had some kind of mechanical problem. But then moments later on the descent of the Mont du Chat, Richie Port and Dan Martin hitting the deck, nobody waited for them. Point. My opinion is that this needs to be written down in some form, even if they're not taken as official UCI regulations, that the riders get together and write down what they see as right or wrong and come to some kind of conclusion so that we're not always debating whether they should be attacking or shouldn't be attacking on social media after each event. Do you know what, Dan? That's a really, really interesting point because that is how law first came into force. It's called common law. It's basically what people generally, through common sense, agreed that was wrong or right. But I don't think they should ever be written down. I think the spirit of sports... What, you don't think unwritten rules no. should be written down? I'm going to be That's really controversial. controversial. It's a controversial subject. I'm going to be controversial. I don't think they should ever be written down. I think the peloton actually self-regulates itself pretty well, as we saw. We saw Fabio Aru attack. The rest of the bunch, Nara Quintana, uh, Richie Port, all looked around, slowed the pace down. So I do think there is still that control. But what I also think, Dan, is that... There's always been the unwritten, the unwritten rules have been around for a long, long time in the peloton, of course, hundreds of years, hundred years old, but I think they've been distorted through the lens of social media. I think we get a warped perspective of what happens through TV, etc. So I think things are fine as they are, but real fertile ground for debate. And as ever, we'd love to know what you think of it. Yeah, I think the social media though has shown us that we as fans don't know where we stand in these yeah. situations and we're confused and we don't really know what's going on. Good point. And I would like to know what's going on by writing down unwritten, unwritten rules. rules. But as Matt <laughs> says, uh, please let us know your thoughts on the unwritten rules and whether you should think that Ryan should be able to attack at moments like that in the comment section down below this video. Uh, now, if you would like to get your hands yeah. on some lovely July swag. themed GCN swag, such as this yellow t-shirt sported by Matt or the black jumper sweater sported by myself, you can go to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, a link to which you will find on the screen right now. Uh, you'll also find on the screen right now a globe. Click on that and you'll subscribe to the Global Cycling Network. Now, a couple more videos which you might be interested in now. Down here is a look uh, from Tom Last on Aerotech at this year's Tour de France. And if you click down here, it's a video where me and Dan looked at the benefits of sitting behind a moto in races. Dan and I. Dan and I. I'm oh, sorry, mate. Dan and I. That's not an unwritten rule. That's a rule, isn't it? A grammar rule. Like and share too.